Colorado, the Centennial State, I guess. Home of wonders the rest of the United States, and maybe the world, could only ever dream of. From Red Rocks to the best damn burrito joints around. Beauty that is unparalleled by just about anything. Among all that beauty stands the greatest of it all. Something that has stood the test of time. An entity that will outlast the Garden of the Gods. Live past the closing of the famed Casa Bonita and possibly even see the heat death of our dear universe. The town of South Park. I bet you think all those things I just said seem a little bit far-fetched. Maybe unrealistic at best? Need I remind you of what this little town has been through the last 27 years? Dude, Jesus Christ used to live here, okay? Somehow in South Park, magic is real, and the human spirit and human stupidity borders on the supernatural. Okay, actually, it's completely supernatural. <laughs> Honestly, these people scare the hell out of me. They've dealt with just about anything you could imagine, from a mechanical Barbara Streisand to a British kid. Ugh. They've always come out on top. Well, eventually. <sighs> Is there anything the residents of this fair town couldn't handle? Anything that they would ever feel is just too much? Well, yeah, apparently. Uh, snow. Just lots and lots of snow. <laughs> <sighs> well, if you'll excuse me, I need to walk home now to finish up the review. I came all the way up to fair play for this intro bit, so I hope you appreciate it. Uh, see you in two days. Hey, uh, where are you, where are you going, here, dude? Where you? No, don't. I thought we were. Uh, I guess he's walking. All right. When I wake up, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who wakes up next to you. When I go out, yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who goes along with you. If I get drunk, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who gets drunk next to you. And if I heave up. Yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna be, be the man who's heavering to you. But I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more to be the man who walked a thousand miles to fall down at you. Breaking news! And now, our top story tonight. It has been two days since anyone has heard from famed video gamer and sexiest man alive runner-up. It was said he was working on a review of the title South Park Snow Day, and it was, quote, finna be hot fire, despite taking place in the winter. Authorities have said, oh, wait, uh, I'm getting some new information here. Oh, yeah, he just walked through the front door. Thank you, Jeff. Oh, that was fun. Why did I not drive up there? I don't know what's funnier. Let me put this on real quick. There. That's slightly... It's actually a little worse. The review. Right, that's what I was doing. South Park actually has quite a long history in video games with the first one having released all the way back in 1998 for PlayStation 1, Nintendo 64, and PC. That was barely over a year since the first episode of the show even aired, so that really tells you just how big of a breakaway hit South Park really was. It was a first-person shooter. Weird, right? Not exactly what I would have immediately thought of if I was tasked with bringing a new show like South Park to life on the PlayStation. For every person that looks back on it fondly, like myself, there's gotta be even more people that look back on it and remember how goddamn annoying those turkeys in the first few levels were, like myself. There were certainly more games that would come out in the following 27 years, from Xbox Arcade mobile titles to a kart racer with the funniest remix of a theme song of all time. It would appear that most of the games over the years would be rated pretty low to mid at best. This is until 2014, when we would be gifted a true gem in The Stick of Truth, a turn-based RPG from Obsidian. You know, the team behind Fallout New Vegas? When that game was announced, I was super curious to see how the hell they were going to transform a show like South Park into a fantasy-adjacent RPG, but I did not expect it to be as good as it was. They knocked it out of the park and created what, in my opinion, is an instant classic, and the follow-up, which saw a change in developers, still brought it. 
But after that, we entered a period of almost nothing. We were given a well-received mobile title, but fans like myself were waiting to see what the next big thing would be for the IP. I needed my fix, man. As 2023 rolled around, it finally happened. My prayers had been answered. A new South Park title was finally announced. South Park Snow Day. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Welcome back to Park County, everyone. It's just as beautiful as always, isn't it? This time around, there would appear to be a bit more snow than usual, though. And while Colorado's not really a stranger to snow by any stretch of the imagination, this was just ridiculous. Snow Day takes place during a... snow day. The night after a massive blizzard sees schools close the following day, and I don't need to tell you just how special an occasion that can be. The town is once again destroyed, and while the adults have to deal with all that shit, us kids get to have the time of our lives. So let's get out there. The new kid is back at it again with the entire crew, but this time they have the option to bring along some of the other new kids in town for the adventure. You have to yet again reunite the land of Zaron. Zaron? Zaron? Under your rightful rule. The first thing you're going to notice upon launching the game is, whoa, South Park is in 3D again? Yes, yes it is, and I have to say the transition to the third dimension has never looked better for the franchise. I noted that, while playing, that it still felt incredibly accurate to the show's style. I mean, of course it would need to be, right? I loved seeing it like this. Nothing felt out of place or weird. At least not how I'm sure it felt when people tried that 1998 title for the first time. All the characters are animated exactly as you would expect and want. And the environments look pretty awesome. So Snow Day looks pretty good. When it comes to the game's story, it's certainly light. What I mean by that is, the narrative isn't nearly as in-depth as entries like The Stick of Truth. It serves the type of game they built just fine, but it's not gonna blow anyone's minds. South Park has never been a complete stranger to actually attempting something a little more lighthearted, or dare I say it, wholesome? While I wouldn't really call this game wholesome, I would certainly say this is one of those toned-down stories coming from Matt and Trey. As a matter of fact, the story is actually quite a big point of contention right now because it's lacking what I refer to as the South Park punch, but we'll get more into that a little later. Don't get me wrong, as a lifelong fan of the show, I really like when they dial things back a bit. I don't always need the most balls-to-the-walls episode to love what's going on, but I can see how some people would say that the story in Snow Day lacks teeth. While the story might be a little lukewarm for some, I feel that it is made up for in great art style, and you already know, a soundtrack that went way harder than it had any reason to. It looks good, it sounds good, does it play good? Well, as far as performance goes at least, absolutely. While Zack and I got well over the 144 FPS mark on our beefy machines that sport a 4090 and 3070 respectively, Steam Deck Gaming reported that this sucker can hit pretty great frame rates on the deck, which bodes well for just about anyone who wants to play. Didn't really have any issues at all performance-wise my whole way through. Save for maybe the occasional frame dip in bigger fights, or a one-off bug that occurred a couple hours in, that was basically the exact same issue as getting hit by a giant in Skyrim. I flew about 300 miles into the sky, and when I came back down, I was stuck in some geometry, so we had to abandon and reload. You're once again stepping into the shoes of the new kid. You have to take up your throne once more to bring peace to the land as Kyle, Stan, Kenny, and maybe more have decided to screw off and do their own weird crap. This time, however, you'll be able to bring your friends along for the adventure as some more new kids moved to town recently. Who are these assholes? They're my secret army. <laughs> We're attacking you before you attack us! <laughs> what are you talking about? The fucking ball <laughs> From your base, Koopa Keep, you'll be able to upgrade your abilities, buy cosmetic items from Tweak and Craig, choose your powers and weapons with Tolkien, and select missions through Cartman that will see you, and your friends, moving segment by segment through a campaign mission until you reach a boss fight. Along the way, you'll be taught about the game's main mechanic, the card system. 
These cards are how you enhance your abilities on the fly, and each one has a level of rarity from common to ultra legendary, each level naturally boosting the card stats until your abilities are simply OP as hell. Chief among these cards is the best of the best, the bullshit card. You can play one of these bad boys a certain number of times per chapter, and you'll suddenly be on the border of cheating. Have you ever fought a group of kindergartners wielding lightsabers? <laughs> you're going to, so make sure you use your bullshit card wisely. What I really like about this card system is that each chapter you journey out on requires you to pick new cards before you set out. Along the way, you'll run into Jimmy, who will let you upgrade or purchase new cards using the game's main currency, Toilet Paper. Forcing the players to abide by the weird card-picking rules actually helped add a bit more variety to the runs as time went on. Can't let you get too OP too fast and breeze through this already short game. You'll also run into Henrietta out in the field, who will let you use a special type of card that could give your currency a boost or refill your bullshit card uses when you run dry. I mentioned the toilet paper being the game's main currency, which is used when in missions. Outside of missions, you have two more. Platinum Points, or PP, and Dark Matter. The PP is gathered through completing challenges and is used to buy more cosmetics from Tweak and Craig, while Dark Matter is used to upgrade your character's perks like stamina and health. Alongside your enhancements and cards, you'll also have a couple of choices for weaponry in the daggers, sword and shield, and two-handed axe on the melee side, and bow, staff, or wand on the ranged side. All of which have slightly different play styles, which are of course affected by cards that are chosen at the start of a mission. An example is the wand, which acts like a flamethrower by default, but with certain cards being selected, it will suddenly be a lightning wand that arcs from enemy to enemy. Which is way more useful, by the way. All of this is accompanied by your powers, of which you can have up to two at any one time, like a bubble shield or a healing totem. It's frantic and chaotic hack and slash action, just not at its best. Does this gameplay loop get boring or draining? Well, I can see how it would if the game were longer. While the overall package isn't so bad, and there is some good in here, we need to address the shortcomings yet again. My oh-so-favorite section. Can you sense my sarcasm? So, Snow Day is sitting at a 57% on Steam as of writing and filming this video. I've been talking about it pretty favorably up to this point, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention some of the things that are really holding this title back for me. First up, it's a pretty short game, taking on average 5 hours to complete. Maybe an hour or so longer if you want to complete just about everything. Now, I'm the type of person that doesn't see playtime as needing to be a billion hours for a game to be worth it, but I definitely understand feeling overwhelmed when you finish a game this quickly. Having a base price of $30 does help soften the blow a bit. There are extra packs to be purchased, should you choose so, that can drive that $30 upwards of $50 or more, which, for me, drags the game into, wow, this is far too short territory. Briefly, Circling back to the story issues, it actually took me a little while to understand what everyone's complaint was. Then, I thought about that level in the Stick of Truth that sees you performing an abortion and fighting a giant Nazi fetus monster. There's nothing anywhere near that level of insane writing going on in Snow Day. While I do understand die-hard fans of South Park missing out on the writing from the far less tame previous entries, this wasn't as big of an issue for me. What was a much larger problem was the extra content for sale. The worst among the extra content is the Season Pass that spells out a bit of a roadmap for the game, promising to add in at least two new weapons and a new weapon variant, whatever that means, each one of those coming with new cards to change up gameplay, new cosmetics, and a new game mode all coming down the pipeline by October of this year. For me, the Season Pass accentuated the issues I was finding myself facing while playing. The game only has six weapons? No armor? Eight special powers to use? Thank God for the card system, because without it, I do think this would be a game to avoid. I did mention that each new weapon will add new cards, six to be exact, to the game. Thankfully, they will be keeping up with what is definitely the best mechanic. Anyway, the Season Pass's promised content feels so insanely sparse, considering its own base price is nearly that of the full game at $25. 20 if you buy the Deluxe Edition. Ooh. The first new weapon that players are going to get access to from this in a month or so is a snowball, for Christ's sake. You know what your first weapon is in the 1998 release? I'll give you one guess. How the hell are you gonna make a game centered around kids playing on a snow day and not ship it with a snowball weapon at launch? I find it really shitty that for almost double the price of the base game, I have to wait a month 
for a snowball. They are adding a new game mode around October, but I don't know how many players are going to be tuning back into Snow Day when that comes around. Normally, I'd be happy to wait, but there's nothing that I find myself wanting to do with the game in the meantime. The replay value doesn't feel very strong in a game that certainly needed it. The perks and challenges definitely do their best to get you coming back, and that spare game mode that was included as a free day one DLC for some reason can also assist in that area, but I genuinely don't see anyone wanting to come back and replay the same missions again just because you gave them a new shirt or a snowball and Lord only knows what the new game mode would even be. Why would I be back in six months when I was done in six hours? I know that this is quite a different game than the Stick of Truth or the Fractured But Whole. I wasn't expecting there to be a billion different weapon types, but I was certainly hoping for a little more from this. Like, I don't know, maybe armor, for instance? And where the hell is my goddamn snowball? Short and lacking, just like your dad, South Park Snow Day is about 60% the game I wanted it to be. I know nothing about development, but this sure does feel like a title that could have greatly benefited from another six, eight months, a year in the oven. If this game's season pass content had all been rolled into one package for $30, I would say this is a much stronger buy. $30 for all of that, and it would probably have come out a little bit closer to the holiday season, because it does feel kind of weird that this game released in spring. It's 70 degrees and sunny out there, for God's sake. This probably would have bumped up a letter grade for a lot of players, honestly. Instead, what we got is a bunch of stuff that feels like it was stripped away in the planning phase to justify throwing an extra 20 bones on top of that default price. I did enjoy my time with this game, but I would say 15 to 20 bucks is a significantly more appropriate price for what you're getting right now. While I do recommend it overall, I would have to say, wait for a hefty price drop on this one. Or hell, maybe wait for a gold or complete edition that does have all that stuff rolled in for the 30 bucks, like I mentioned before. At that point, $30 would feel more than fair to me. But as of now, you are better off waiting. And speaking of waiting, I can't wait any longer. I'm probably gonna go get a rabies shot today. While out in the woods, I ran into this creature that had Patrick Duffy for a leg, so... Yeah, he bit me. He's a nice guy otherwise. Anyway, I'll be back soon enough with another review. But until then, rabies shot, folks. Oh, God.